Let's open our Bibles to uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, verses 22. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be in the house of God? Amen. I am. Hallelujah. There's an expectancy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's good to be in God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in chapter 5, verse 22, and we're going to read 23 also in the King James, but the fruit of the Spirit, but the fruit of the Spirit, and of course we talked about that this is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit, this is the fruit of a regenerated, Spirit-filled man, right? This is, this is the Spirit of God upon a person, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Now, that word faith, we have to kind of fix it in our Bible. It's actually faithfulness, right? Faithfulness, because see, thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you, girls. Um, so we have to look at that word faith. That word is faithfulness, because see, the fruit of the Spirit which is the human-born, regenerated person, has the God kind of faith. So this is talking about faithfulness, being faithful, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. In other words, nothing could, could, could be compared to this, right? And we, it, this right here is not referring to the Holy Spirit. And, and, and although it, it is speaking that it, it is involved, the Holy Spirit is involved in everything that we do, but it's, it's speaking about our human spirit, our born-again spirit. The Good News Bible says this, but the spirit produces. The spirit of an inner man that is born again, regenerated, that spirit produces in him. Uh, Jesus talked about that spirit, about the fruit. He's the vine. Uh, we are the branches, Right? Uh, and if you look at verse 19, now we're not going to read it all, verse 19 now. Now the works of the flesh are. It's amazing how Paul is contrasting these two words. The works of the flesh are. And then verse 22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is. Do you see this? Now the works of the flesh are. So it's the carnality. What the carnality produces is what you find in verse 19. But the fruit of the Spirit is, and, and that's what we read now, right? And so, what is the first fruit that is mentioned here? It is the word love, right? And so that is the thing that has to be built up in us, um, so we have to see it. Now, go with me to John, the fifth chapter, verses 1. And we're going to read 1 through 5. John 15, 1 through 5. When you have it, say hallelujah. All righty. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Uh, or we find here that he is the, the worker. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring more forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. So we have to see something. Well, the word of God in us causes the fruit of the Spirit to grow and mature. Now notice this. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. Jesus is talking about, this is the way love works, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for with me you cannot do nothing. You know, without Christ you can't love. Uh, when you have Christ in you, it's the fruit of the Spirit that's in you that is love in you that starts to manifest as a born-again believer. Folks, if there is a born-again believer that doesn't have love, then that's where you have to really question 
that, that born-again person. Now notice this, every one of us have love, but it takes us to work it and to build it, right? So Jesus speaking here uh, is, is really, what, what kind of fruit is, is, is he wanting us to bear in this verse? What kind of fruit is he talking about? It's the fruit of the Spirit. He says, you can't bear it if you're not in me, but if you're in me, I am the branch, uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that's abided in me, I abide him. So Jesus is love. His Father is love. God is love. So if we abide in him, that means we have the love of God in us, right? Hallelujah. Now notice this. I'm going to talk about something that's so interesting. Is it's natural human love versus divine love. Now let me give you an example. Uh, there was a, a twin children. One of them needed a blood transfusion. And um, the father was talking to the mother that if, if, this, if our child, the boy, doesn't get a blood transfusion, he may die. And so the other twin heard it. And he told his father, he said, he said Daddy, I'll go ahead and, and give the blood transfusion to my brother. And so they were so happy because they, they didn't want to say, you know, if you can do it, they wanted to come from the heart. How many people know that love comes from the heart? Love is not, love can't be manufactured, it comes from the heart. And so when they got ready to do the blood transfusion, they, they laid him down and they started poking him and starting to get the, the tubes in him. And he looked at his dad and said, Dad, um, how long will it be before I die? And his father said, you're not going to die, son. You're just giving blood. He said, oh, I was willing to die for my brother. Now notice this. This right here is, is divine love. Because he's laying down his life for his brother. Didn't consider, didn't consider nothing but letting his brother live. So this is divine love versus one that says, no, I'm not going to give you my blood. No way. No way. This is my blood. It's mine. You see, so... Even though they still may love each other, but one is divine love. Are you listening, church? And the other one is, is human, uh, natural human love. Now, I said Sunday, the natural human love is selfish. Now, I want you to think about this. Selfish. It's, it, it, it's a concern. It's concerned about I, 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 or me, me, me. What's mine? What can I have? And what I have to put up with. Uh, and I notice this. How many people have ever said, why do I have to put up with this? Why do I put up with them? <laughs> I've heard people say that. Why do I have to put up with this? Why do I have to put up with them? And, and so this is natural human love. Natural human love says, it's what I want, not what you need or want. Now, I want you to think about it. This is where we have to start gauging this type of love in our walk a good example and let me give you a good example i was reading about a widow woman never let her children visit uh, other friends houses she was clingy always wanted them at home never thought uh, she thought no one was good enough for her children and the oldest was a girl of 27 years very shy and uh, when you spoke to her, she bowed her head. She couldn't look at you. Uh, she was very intimidated. The boys were in their teen. They had no friends. They had no acquaintances. They want, and they would go to school, but she would tell them, you got to come home. They couldn't go to football games. They couldn't go out riding bikes, play baseball. She was clingy. But at church, she would say, oh, I love my children so much that I protect them. And the preacher says, I don't think you understand what love is. I think you have fear that's dominating you, and that fear is causing you to think that your children will never abound to anything. So really, you're hurting them. So love doesn't do that. Now, I want you to think about it. How many parents are clingy? Even into the adulthood. I know people that are adults, their parents are clingy still. And so it's a very dangerous thing. So yes, she 
loves them, but in the natural way. What you can do for me, what I want you to do for me, what I think is best for you, not what you think what's best for you. You see what I'm saying? So uh, it was natural love, again, mixed with control and fear. Now notice as we see this even in the Christian realm. Uh, we see this in saved people. We see this in pastors and ministers. We see this in, 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 in members of, of the church where they have walls and they don't want to open up and then they say, I love my brother, I love you. And the pastor may say, greet one another and tell them that you love him. And they tell each other they love him, but that's as far as it goes. It's natural love because love has a fruit and fruit shows very clearly the love of God. And God would not walk out on somebody. God would never turn his back on somebody. God will always love the hurting or the lonely or, or the, the unhappy. You see what I'm saying? So we see this in churches. And it's a sad thing because many Christians say, I have the love of God, but they can't stand a person. They can't stand a member. You see what I'm saying? Now, we talked about Romans, the fifth chapter. Look at Romans, the fifth chapter. And it says, uh, let me wait for you to open it. But Romans, the fifth chapter, verses five. It says uh, in the Amplified, well, let me read it to you from the King James. The love of God. Remember, the God kind of love. That's what he's talking about. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Romans 5.5. 5. It's shed abroad in our hearts. Now, our hearts here is not the pumper. It's not the physical heart. It's the spirit man, the core. So, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, or the Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. And the, this is really the first fruit of the Spirit of love. The first fruit, which is love. We should be responding to this indwelling Spirit of love. Shouldn't we, church? Shouldn't we? I mean, really, you know, we're Christians, but I think we really need to look about, look on our love walk. I call this sermon the love way, right? And so we have to really recognize this. So, so this is where we're going to move into the series. We're going to move into the series about growing more in love for one another. Love has many aspects, but the fruit, which is the fruit of love, which is the spirit of love, has to start demonstrating itself in acknowledging the fruit of it. Love produces more. It produced the, heart, the God kind of heart in this, right? And notice this, what are the characteristics of the God kind of love that has been shed in our heart? Think about that. What is it? Now, God doesn't leave us in the dark. The psalmist says in 119.30, you don't need to turn there, but the psalmist says in 119.30, the entrance of thy word giveth light. So it's the word of God that we're in gives us light. It puts light upon our love, puts light, light upon our walk. It puts light upon how we treat others. It puts love upon the things of God. So the Word, when you and I are in the Word, it's the entrance of the most beautiful thing that God has for us. But if we're never in the Word, and we're only going to be carnal, then we're never going to have the fruit of the Spirit, which is really the first one, which is love, right? Right? Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 13 chapter, verses 4. And we're going to read verses 4 through 5. Uh, now, in the King James, uh, it, it's, it's the, the word love is translated charity. Um, I think the author translated it um, definitely from divine love, agape, as charity, but... I don't think we'll, we can understand what Paul is saying when we look at the word charity. Charity doesn't say it's love. Charity means giving, right? But I can understand the Greek word of charity versus love. Love allows you to give. Remember, love is not about me, 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 and I take, take, take. It's about I give, 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 give. So I can see where charity could fit in here, but if the average person reading this could, can look, overlook it and say charity. How many people know what I'm talking about? Well, have you ever read that and looked at that charity and said, okay, wait a minute. 
And then your pastor says, it's actually talking about love, so you kind of get a little like, really? I mean, I see a charity a lot. But if you look at the Amplified, now I want you to pay close attention to this, uh, because I have the Amplified unless you have the app Amplified. Listen to what it says, love. The Amplified in, in verse 14 through 5, chapter 13. Love, divine love, the love of God endures long. Are you listening, church? Love, divine love, the love of God endures long. But some say, and notice this, some say, I- I'm not going to put up with you anymore. I'm sick and tired of this. Now, I know, I, I know what I'm talking about. I, I, I hear this. I, I, I walked this way before. But going back, love, divine love, the love of God endures long. Say with me, it endures long. Amen? Now, notice this. When someone says, I've had it up to here. I'm not putting up with that anymore. That's natural love. That's natural love, isn't it? Now, let's look, keep looking. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Patient and kind. Boy, I can really spend a lot of time there. Many people endure long, all right, but they don't have patience, right? Now, how is that possible? Some say, man, I've suffered all I'm going to do about this. I'm not going to have that anymore. Again, that's human love talking. You see? So in other words, God's love, according to the Word of God, endures long and is patient and kind. Verse 4, love never is envious, nor boils over with jealousy. Amen? How many of you ever got jealous about something? And you love that person. Well, that's natural love. Because natural love is not jealous. Now, I don't know. I've never had the, the I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means to be jealous when somebody has something. I, I just enjoy it when somebody has something. I said, man, that's awesome. I mean, when somebody gets a new house, man, I get excited. They get a new car, I get excited. But I've seen people actually get jealous. I remember when I bought me a Mercedes and I took it to church for the first time and and I wanted everybody to get around the church to bless it. I tell you, there was a few people that didn't get out there to look at it. I could tell right away they were jealous, right? But I could tell people that were happy because the ones that were out there were saying, oh, wow, Pastor, that's awesome, that's awesome, that's awesome. And the rest were drinking coffee inside the church, and I'm thinking, okay, I can understand. I understand they're jealous. But they'll tell you they love you. I love you, Pastor. Yeah, you love me. You just demonstrated jealousy. So love is never envious, nor bowls or with jealousy. Like I said, it's natural love. Is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. Come on, church, amen. And this is Christian. Now, we're talking about Christians in the church that have an attitude. I've been in church meetings where, boy, they're arguing about a $50 bonus. Uh, I, I remember I was at one church and they were literally talking about the color of the carpet. Who cares about the color carpet? They were getting upset at each other. Amen. Pastor was just shaking his head and I, Pastor Christine and I just said, this is ridiculous. This is really ridiculous. Or, you know, back then, shag rug versus gold and versus purple. Come on, church. Amen. Verse 15, verse 5. It's not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It's not rude, unmannerly, does not act unbecomely. Love, which is God's love in us, does not insist on its own right. Uh Uh-oh. It's my right. I have a right. No, you don't. Come on, church. It's it's their own right or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. Come on, y'all getting real quiet. It's not touchy or fretful, resentful. It takes no account of evil done. To, uh, uh, to It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Now, folks, this is kind of hard to swallow when you're involved in all this. And you love Jesus, but I want you to think about this. The love of God, which is God's way of loving, is a right way. And he says it's in you. You just have to start working it. And we have to allow our flesh to submit 
We, we, you know, when you get upset with somebody, immediately take authority over that, that strife or stress or whatever it may be and say, no, I love that person, I love that person because I'm working on love, I'm working on love, I'm working on God's love. Well, see, you're purposely building your love muscles the way the Bible says, not because that person needs your love, no, it's because you need to walk in love. That person has its own job. You and I have our own job other people have their own job, but we all got to work in, in falling in love God's way. Amen. Some people will say, amen, yes. Some people will say, I understand, I know, but it's mine. Uh, I have my right. I remember one time, uh, you know, we were, we were getting ready to eat and, and you know, uh, people wanted to eat certain things. And, you know, when you get around a bunch of preachers and stuff, they want to eat. And... Uh, I remember, uh, you know, the, the, the best thing to do is, well, whatever you guys want, I, I'm okay. Even if you, you go somewhere that you don't like it, you're just going to say, amen, all right, just for the sake of fellowship and love. But this person got obnoxious and said, you know what, why, why do, why do y'all always have plans? Well, let's go where I want to go right now. Everybody, this was a pastor, and I thought, wow. And they all went. But it was sure sour, right? So I'm, you know, people say, I'm having a problem with this situation right now. And so I just need some time off. I just need some time away. I need to cool down. I, yeah, you need to cool down, but you've got to understand something. Is it love that's pulling you away or is it love that's bringing you closer to it? You see what I'm saying? Notice it says, love does not insist on its own rights. Man, I tell you what, when I read that, I said, wow. I started swallowing that. I said, you know, you lose your rights. As a born-again believer, love, you actually lose your rights as a lover of God because you want to be able to enter into that love walk, right? Hallelujah, amen. Notice, notice this, notice this. We will never develop spiritually. Are you listening, church? We'll never develop spiritually like God wants us to until we start believing God. I've always said this, if we will believe the Word and nothing but the Word and let everything submit itself to the belief of the Word, you'll start believing. But see, too many people say, I believe, and they'll say amen. I'm talking about Christians, right? They'll say amen, but they don't, they don't really walk this way. So again, it's the believing, right? Right? That means believing His Word. That means believing that God's love is God's way. And that's the best way. Say with me, it's the best way. If it's God's way, then He knows it's your best way. And that's what's going to fix a lot of problems in our world. You know, the, the world today is, is so full of hate. Um, people, you know, you see it in the news and you see it in the politics, you see it everywhere, everywhere. People are just, you know what I'm saying? You're not wearing a mask, you're wearing a mask. You got COVID, you don't give, you, you, you got, you, it's just so much. It, it's crazy, right? I believe this is an attack on our love walk as believers, but also I believe God is also wanting us to wake up and say, wait a minute, you need to get in love now. You need to get in love. Come on, church, hallelujah, amen. Now notice this, this is nothing new. Uh, you know, when they had the bubonic plague, everybody was masking up. They had the same thing. When they had the Spanish flu, everybody was masking up. They had the same issue. People didn't want to mask up. So this is nothing new. This is just another disease that hit our, our, our community, our country, and it's the same pattern, but love never changes. You see what I'm saying? Love, uh, it never changes. It never, it can't change, right? So in other words, there's a love thermometer. Say with me, love thermometer. And I'm going to call it a love gauge throughout this series. It's a love gauge we find in verse four, 5. Look at it, verse 5. This is the love thermometer. This is the love gauge. Just like you have a gauge in your car to tell how much gas you got, a gauge to tell you if you need oil, hot, whatever it may be, you have a thermometer, you have a love gauge. Listen to what it says. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. Pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Now notice this. This is the love gauge. Takes no account of the evil done to 
it. Look at that word, it. This is where we have to talk about love, love. In this verse, it says it's it. The fruit, it's a fruit. So in other words, love takes no account of evil done to it. Now that's one of the hardest things to do, ladies and gentlemen. When somebody just gets you all upside down, gets you all upset, this is where you really have to work it and work it and say, no, it doesn't affect my love walk. Because that's exactly what the enemy wants to do. He wants to affect your love walk. And the other person is not even thinking about you. And doesn't even think that this is about love. All he's being used or she's being used by the enemy. And then they're not even properly in their right state thinking like this. Because think about it. You're not going to... You know, uh, last night I was listening to... Uh, um, you know, uh, what's her name? Nancy's daughter-in-law. Morgan. She was talking about... In fact, she's talking about love last night. And uh, it was awesome. And in that, she got to talk a lot about, about this. Uh, and it really encouraged me to understand something. Where where we have to realize that love is the right way that God wants us to live, right? It's a, it's a gauge, right? It takes, it takes no account of evil done to, uh, to you. You're not walking, uh, you know, you can't walk in love if you're going to be taking account of everybody that did everything to you. Every, right? I mean, making a memo, a mentally a, a memo of everything. Folks, I can go back and I can remember everything people did to me and it can literally make me an ugly person today if I go back. But I choose not to go back. I was telling my wife the other day, you know, we, it's easy to forgive because the Bible says it's a command. But it's not easy to forget when you start thinking about it, when you start talking about it. You see what I'm saying? There's times that me and my wife can talk about something and, and, and then also it'll take us back and then I'll, and then I'll catch us and say, you know what, honey, we better not go there because it's going to really upset us again. So we choose to pray for that person. We love them, Father. We thank you that we forgave them. And, and we love you, Father. We move on. And, and quickly, the Lord just lifts us out of this. Amen. So as long as you and I walk in love and stay full of the Holy Ghost, uh, you won't take account of the evil done to you. Amen. And so I want to go back to, let's look back what Jesus said. Amen. Go with me to the book of John. We're going to go back to what we first read. And, and, and I want you to see this now that we come this far uh, in Scripture. And, and listen, listen to what it says here. Hallelujah. Amen. John, the 15th chapter, verses 1. Now, I want you to see this now through the eyes of love now. Remember, Jesus has the love of his Father. The Father loves Jesus as much as he loves us. So the love of God is shed or brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is in our lot, in our walk. We're believers. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Uh, it's truth. You can't be connected to a, 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 a wicked vine. You can't be connected to hatred. You've got to be connected to love. I am the true vine. And my father, say with me, my father, which is love. God is love. So let's put... And love is my husbandman. So in other words, love now starts working in me, which is God. God is working in me. Every branch in me, Jesus said, that beareth not the fruit of love, he taketh away. Now look at that word, he taketh away. This means that you're not going to grow spiritually. That means faith is not going to work in you when, 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 when love is trampled on. And remember, fear comes and that is contaminates your faith and faith worketh by love. So in other words, every branch in Jesus that bears not love, it, it, it takes away, it takes away from you. You miss out on faith. Your faith is weak. You have no faith. You're running into situations. You're starting to see things that are not working well in you. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth love, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth 
more love. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, we have to work with the love that, that, that is in us so that it can grow, so that he can make it grow even more. Now, folks, it's like an apple tree. You, you're, you plant an apple tree, and you live there for 25 years, <laughs> and the tree is starting to put apples, right? I want you to think about this. You're sitting out there drinking some lemonade, and you're saying, oh, can't wait for those apples to get red. And then you see the little, little, green, little green apple fruit there. You're not going to go pick it, are you? You, you're, you don't want, and you don't want the wind to blow those, those apples down. So you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you're waiting. And, and you don't wait too long because they're going to fall to the ground, and, and they're going to be too ripe. But you wait the perfect time. Usually the perfect time is they're right where they're turning, they're leaving the green, and they're turning red. That's the perfect time because that's what they call, uh, you know, shelving time, the, the fruit sits there. How many people know? You go, to the, you go buy bananas, and what kind of bananas you get? You, you buy the bananas that are ripe, or you buy the bananas that are just about still green, but they're getting ready to turn, right? Aren't they, aren't they awesome? Yeah. <laughs> and the other way, that day my wife went to Brahms, and she couldn't find any good bananas. So she bought a lot of ready-to-ripe bananas. I said, my baby, we're going to have to eat these fast. I've been eating bananas two times a day now. Amen. <laughs> eating them fast. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, he says, he... he that it may produce more love. Now, listen to this. Now, you are clean through the Word. Now, you're clean. What does that mean? Because love now is working in you. The Word of God is working. You remember, God is love. Now, God's Word is working in you and you're coming cleaner. cleaner. Come on, church. This is where we have to really think about this. Now, you are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, amen, and love in you. I in you, which is love in you. As the branch cannot bear love of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can, you ex no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, which is love, and I in him, which is love in him, the same bringeth more love. Much brings forth much love, for without me you can do nothing. Now, do you see how this works with love? So in other words, love is the key that we have to recognize as a born-again believer. As a born-again believer, we have to really work on love. And I believe that these are the days that we're living and that we have to really work on that love tank, work on that love walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially what's happening in the world. Come on, church. Especially what's taking place all around you. People, I'm telling you, it, it was getting ugly out there. Uh, Jesus said that in the last days, many's love, the love will be cold, becoming cold, right? So if, if, if we're in the last days, then we have to keep our love fire burning strong. Hallelujah. Amen. And watch out for those little foxes that'll come to nibble at your vine to pull, out, pull that green little, little apple before it becomes luscious, right? We have to recognize those little subtle attacks. Uh, you know, I had someone not too long ago uh, say, you know, I'm going to another church because I really need to go listen to this other preacher. And I thought, my goodness, well, well, why, why does somebody tell me Sunday morning? Why don't they tell me Friday? You see what I'm saying? Why don't they tell me during the week? You see what I'm saying? And, and the next thing you know, uh, they're going to another church. They say, I found my church, right? And so you're saying, okay, I love, I'm walking in love. I'm walking in love. I'm walking in love. I'm walking in love. I'm walking. Because see, that was an attack for me to get me out of love. So I said, nah, I'm walking in love. I'm walking in love, right? You see, and, and we have to really think about these things. Think about people that are hurting you. Think about people that have hurt you just recently, before this message came, right? I told my wife, honey, we better be strong in love because God is getting ready to bring a series about love and the enemy hates what we're going to talk about. So let's go ahead and stand up, church. Let's go ahead and stand up. And let's, 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 let's go ahead and dig deeper into God. Let's go ahead and say, Father, I'm, I'm the branch, you're the vine. I'm going to be connected to you more in these days, more than ever. I don't care what people do to me because it's, it's the love that I'm going to look at. I, I'm going to protect the love. I'm doing the love walk. I'm doing the love way, Father. Lord, I, I, I forgive people. I forgive them. I forgive them, Lord. They don't know the love. They don't know love. They don't really know the God kind of love because if they knew the God kind of love, they would not.
not be doing this. You see what I'm saying? So, Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we thank you for this series. Lord, I'm excited. I'm hungry for more. Lord, we thought we knew love, but, Lord, Lord, you're revealing to us in this era, in this, this time, in these, in these awakening days. Lord, you're revealing to us, Lord, to walk in love even more, to stay in love even more. How to stay in love is to be connected to you, Father. So, Lord, we choose, we choose to connect to you, Lord. Father, we want you to grow us. We want the love to grow in us as we connect more with you, Lord, as we know the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Shambron Daba. Come on, just, just praise God. Grow. Build your inner man. Hallelujah. Shambron Daba. Ribo Sobron Dabra. Kiti de Bambro. Ro Robon de Brandi Kita. Brandi Kita. Ro Tobo Sobron de Brandi Kita. Hallelujah. Shambro. Ro Robon de Brandi Kita. Ron de Bos Sobron de Brandi Kita. Ro Tobo Corobo Corobo Coraba. Ron de Bos Sobron de Brandi Kita. Brati Kite. Ro Robo Sobron de Bra. Father, we love you. You love us. Us, Father, you love us as much as you love Jesus. Oh, it's the love way. It's the love way. We choose to walk the love way. Father, we take authority over the devil of hatred, the devil of, of division, the devil of, of ungodliness, uh, 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 deter uh, uh, contaminated, uh, contaminated, trying to contaminate love, uh, per perverted love. We come against that in the name of Jesus. We come against that. Lord, we understand natural love versus divine love divine love is not selfish natural love is selfish lord we come against that natural expectation expectation on people lord we fall into love father in the name of jesus and father oh may your church grow in this kind of love lord in these days oh god may the church of jesus grow more in god's love in divine love in the name of jesus hallelujah Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we give you the praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we believe the best, Father. We have discernment. We have the wisdom of God. And we're always going to believe the best. We're not looking at hearsay. We're not looking at what one said. But Lord, we're looking to you, Father Lord. And you are the truth. You are the truth, Father. And in you is the true love. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. And notice this. I, I, I understand people when they say, I love them. And they hurt each other. I understand that. They don't realize it's not divine love. It's not God's kind of love. It's natural. It has a lot of flesh, carnality in it. Um, I can tell you that story. Those two little boys that needed, one needed blood transfusion. One thought that he was going to die the moment he gave his blood to his brother. And went all the way to the hospital and laid there to give his brother blood. And he told his dad, how long will it be before, before I die? He said, son, you're not dying. I want you to think about that. That boy was predetermined that he was going to lose his life for his brother. You're talking about love, laying down your life for someone. And I think about that. I think about that. And I said, wow, it's a true story. True story. And, and you're talking about, you just become speechless when you say you love somebody. And, you know, and, uh, would you lay your life down? No, not knowing that, I mean, not knowing that, <laughs> knowing that you, you're going to die when you give some of your blood and, you're going to the hospital, walk, work in the hospital. Can you imagine what? I'd like to know what his thought was going to the hospital. Little boy. What he told his daddy, what he told his father or his brother on the way up there. That they, he was not going to see them again. He was going to die simply by giving a blood transfusion. Well, I'm telling you, about, you're talking about love. You're talking about innocent, divine love laying down his life. That boy's special, you know that. That boy's special. Now I want you to think about that. This is what love is. Love is divine. It, it, it's, it's not, it can't be thought of. It can't be, uh, you know, just manufactured. It's got to come from the spirit, man. 
So when you gave your life to Jesus, love's in there. Just like faith's in there. You believe God in faith for healing. You believe God in faith for finances. You believe God in faith for accepting Jesus. That's the same way it is in love. It's in you. Now you've got to rise up and build it every day. And if you've been attacked so much by people, then, God, then you're very special, really. Because that means you've got to grow more in love. And there's something about you. And the devil's trying to destroy that. You know, the characteristics of people are so beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful people I know. And they get hurt so much. You know, the, 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 the soft-hearted ones are the ones that get hurt the most. And you wonder, why is it? It's because they have love in them that God wants to produce out of them. Because love changes everything. And I know people that are hardcore, mean. They fall in love with Jesus and they're still trying to work on that meanness. And they're trying to get rid of it. You know, I was one that was always temp temperamental. And, and, you know, I'm still working on love because there's things that's bother me and I have to go to God immediately and work on that, you know. But there are some people that it just falls off them easy. You know, so I want you to think about that. Amen. Did you get something, church, tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.